what I really like about your career is that you're obviously a proven academic and professor, but you're also a business person and an art collector. But is it okay to for you to spend maybe five minutes on shipping because you have a great story on shipping and you're passionate about it? Can you explain the, the story on how you got involved in a specific company and how you turned it around and made a profit of it? Because we have many listeners who really love shipping. Well, thank you. No, uh, listen, I, I have, uh, uh, people have been working on shipping issues in my family for several generations, so I've been involved in that. Uh, I took over a, a small shipping company from a, a cousin of my mother, uh, Mr. Sam Ugustad. At that time, when I took over S. Ugustad ships the day, there were two small ships in the company, supply ships, and a bundle of debts. So de facto, I took over half a ship. So what I then did was to spend uh, five years uh, buying out uh, the other shareholders. I took over around roughly 50% of the company from my, my uh, previous owner. And then I bought out the others over the next five years while the asset value was still low. And then I built it up. And uh, of course, shipping, as far as I can understand, is all about, about timing. So I bought them, bought the ships secondhand, mostly at the, when the market was down. And then others sold, I bought. And then I sold it at top. So when I sold the shipping company, I, it was quite big. I think we had 10, 15 ships. And uh, again, uh, I was very focused, by the way. I was strictly in the offshore supply ship area. I stayed away from, I, I did some diversification. I lost a lot of money on that. Well, carriers, tankers, chemicals, reefers, which have since gone out. But, but the point is keeping focus and really understanding when to get in and when to get out, when to go long, long-term charters, when to go short, stay spot. These, these are some fairly simple rules that I follow a lot of money resulted. Obviously, when I sold it, it was emotionally quite uh, dramatic. But, you know, if, if you are an investor and you become emotionally detached to your assets, you're probably in Ship Creek. You have to always be willing to sell to, to, uh, to should we say, cash in. I was equally emotionally slightly distressed when I sold the Lorange Institute to the Chinese. But in retrospect, thanks God, I did it. And uh, that's the way it is. So, so but when, I, when you sell things, in my opinion, never sell your name. So I've always kept uh, my name, Lorange, or, or the Ugrista name. I, my, my investment company now is Esu Ugusta Invest. Cannot be traced back to me, which I also think is good, by the way. I am very glad that I'm not figuring in any of these ridiculous lists of the, the, the monthly magazine Capital, for instance. I have no interest in that. So, so stay neutral, stay be below the radar. And, and it's bad that I'm talking with you now, but Normally, I don't do that. It's an, it's an excellent point, and I'm sorry for exposing you, 